What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the lifeline of the Imperial Navy, the Altor class replenishment ship. A giant fuel tanker slash mobile dry dock space station may not seem as cool as a warship to some people, but I just love this side of Star Wars lore that shows the logistics of how it all works. We're gonna get into the size, use, armament, complement, and all that good stuff in a second. But to really drive this point home about how important keeping the flow of supplies is to a war effort, I wanted to share three quotes from great military minds from our world. General Eisenhower said, You will not find it difficult to prove that battles, campaigns, and even wars have been won or lost primarily because of logistics. Napoleon perhaps said most famously of all, The amateurs discuss tactics, the professionals discuss logistics. And one of my favorites is a quote attributed to Alexander the Great, My logisticians are a humorless lot. They know that if my campaign fails, they are the first ones I will slay. So though this ship wasn't blowing away rebel scum, it was at least equally important. Many would say much more so. But we should start by grasping the sheer scale of this thing, so let's start with a size comparison. The Altor was 4,600 meters or 2.86 miles long. That makes it nearly three times the length of the Imperial Star Destroyer and about a quarter the size of the Super Star Destroyers. At a height of 1,150 meters, or 0.71 miles, it was nearly as tall as a Venator is long, or nearly two and a half ISDs stack on top of each other. As for its width, it was 1,042 meters, or 0.65 miles across, making it about a Zillow Beast wider than an ISD, or nearly two Venators. Let's see how all of that would look on Earth. The Altor would be about 10 times longer than the longest ship ever built, the Nock Nevis oil tanker. It would stand as tall as the Burj Khalifa with three Statues of Liberty slapped on top, and it would be wider than Central Park. In fact, another way to see this is to think about it being both wider and longer than Central Park, while being the height of two and a half Empire State Buildings. Just try and grasp all of this space being just one ship. But of course, we have to go ahead and measure the tanks themselves. We get a length of 1,104 meters, a height of 460 meters, and a width of 288 meters. We can use that to figure out the volume of each of these individual tanks. I just did the calculations for a cylinder, so keep in mind it would be a bit larger since these ends aren't flat, but I got 183,474,038 cubic meters for the volume. For some reference, that's equal to 73,390 Olympic-sized swimming pools full of Star Destroyer fuel. And keep in mind that there are six of these containers on the Altor, so that's a total of 1,100,844,228 cubic meters of fuel. And please indulge me in just one more comparison here, but I had to crunch the math and this just blew me away, but that means that a single Altor has 3.5 times as much fuel as there is water in all of the swimming pools across the entire United States. Just one of these tanks had more than half of the entire country's pool water. Now surprisingly, and quite disappointingly, the lore surrounding fuel use by nearly any ship is non-existent. There are some lines like the Millennium Falcon can last a day on a kilogram of liquid metal fuel, and that an ISD can cruise around for 9 months before needing refueling, but that doesn't really give us numbers to work with. I tried looking into this as deep as possible, even skimming through the RPG reference book Galaxy Guide 6 Tramp Freighters. This is from 1990, and is still considered one of the most in-depth guides, including everything from the cost to have landing gear inspected and waste removal at starports, and how that differs depending on the quality of the port and the quality of the goods you want replaced. But even this book doesn't say how much fuel ships burn through on average. If I missed that part, definitely put it down in the comments. But I did pick up this important gem. A bit of a side note, but there were devices called solid-state fuel converters that could turn anything into fuel. I mean anything, and so the most efficient use was of course organic waste. Did we just stumble upon why Imperial ships are always overmanned, with numbers like 37,000 crew members on a single ISD? It all makes sense now. Palpatine's empire was ruled by shit-powered ships. But I jokingly digress, back to the lore. Altor class ships would normally be stationed around highly protected Imperial space stations and planets, like we see over naval station Valadusia. When it was to refuel a ship, these arms would extend and hold the ship in place, while one could connect to the ventral side and actually pump the fuel into the Star Destroyer. With these four arms, it could actually service many destroyers at once, but was designed to be able to completely refuel two dreadnought-sized ships at the same time. 
Star Dreadnoughts being things like the Executor class. Now there's no stat for its top speed or if it had a hyperdrive, but it does have this massive array of 63 engines, 7 main engines, and 54 auxiliary. But I still think that it would be at most tied with an ISD at around 1000 km per hour because it has no need for tactical maneuvers. I would expect a hyperdrive though, just to make single jumps straight out to other highly controlled sectors. You wouldn't want to make a series of jumps and risk losing an amount of fuel that could supply a whole fleet of rebel ships. But just in case, you can see that both the dorsal and ventral sides are lined with what appear to be turbo laser towers similar to those found on the Death Star. But surprisingly, there is only one deflector shield generator, about the same size as those found on the ISD. I would hope that there are others that we just can't see here, because there is a ton of value in just destroying these if you want to cripple the Imperial War Machine. Of course the Rebels would want that fuel, but the loss of a single Altor might cause the redeployment of whole sector fleets, in effect liberating many worlds as the Empire ensured the protection of more important planets. But what's really interesting is the purpose behind this skeletal appearance. You see all these open spaces? These were dry docks for smaller ships. Remember the size of this thing, and just as the ISD could swallow up a CR-90, these larger openings were around 460 meters long, while these other ones were 90 meters. This means that while refueling two dreadnoughts, it could also be resupplying or even repairing eight Arquidens class light cruisers and 16 Gazanti class cruisers. Because remember, it is mirrored on the ventral side as well. These ships would be attached via these smaller boom arms and repaired via craft that were stored in the Altor's hangar bays. Now this area could also be used as a dock for ships, but it was usually filled with munitions, foodstuffs, and even reactors for some smaller ships. In this way, it acted a lot like a traveling space station, while returning to be itself refueled at places like Valadusia. You can see here that the Altor's tanks were held in place via these clamps, which along with its open design, allowed for an easy exchange of these tanks. The Empire decided to have these fuel tanks refueled at the space station, and just quickly swapped out as the Altors arrived, instead of having them wait around to be refueled. So that's it for its breakdown, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. Altor is a Latin word that means nourisher or sustainer, a cool reference to its function as a resupply ship, providing the Star Destroyers with all the fuel and repairs to keep them going. The ship started off as a fan-made creation by Ansel over at Fractal Sponge, but became an official part of the Star Wars universe when Lucas Licensing approached him to provide art for the essential guide to warfare. But that's it for the Altor class replenishment ship. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make these videos, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, whether it be gas or food, it's fuel that keeps you fighting, and the Force will be with you, always.